good Monday to all of you. Hope you are able to join us today. I just made the tea, so it's pretty darn hot. Hopefully, I don't spill any of it. Don't forget to say hello so I know that there are people out there. Otherwise, I feel like I'm talking to myself, which isn't always a bad thing. What's that joke? It's fine unless you answer yourself. <laughs> then you're in trouble. Anyway, hello, everybody. Um, I hope and wonder if any of you joined us on Friday night. Hi, Donna. Good to see you. Um, on Friday night at Bobble Link Yarns when we were co-host with Katie from Bobble Link Yarns. Hi, Bess. Hi, Willa. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Gail. We had a great time watching her and all of her sheep. Hi, Stella. Um, and all of the baby lambs that have been born. Many of them, surprisingly, I thought anyway, that were black. I expected to see a lot more white ones, but a lot of them were black, even those born to white mothers. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Bonnie. Glad you remembered. Don't forget, keep making comments. Hi, Ruth Ann. Um, Cause it's nice to have a little chat. Oh, Eileen, I'm sorry you did. But that's a good point. So what I wanted to tell you was that Kate, Katie is doing this a number of times this month. Hi, Northampton Live. Hey, Beth. Yeah, and Brenda, yeah, Bob Link was fun and so very cute. She's doing it actually a number of times this month. So if you missed it, um, when I was the co-host, you can still go on. In fact, she's doing another live this Saturday at two o'clock on Facebook Live. So if you wanna see what life is like inside of a sheep barn, basically Kate talks about um, what it means to be a shepherd and to raise sheep, why they do it, how they do it, and um, shows you some of the babies, talks about why they have to maybe um, indoor feed, bottle feed a baby sheep. Sometimes moms don't wanna be moms we've all been there. Hi, Terry. Hey, Decker. Oh, 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 Decker. Yeah, everybody, if you do um, remember to share this, that would be even greater. But anyway, she just talks about having the sheep in the barn and why she is beginning to collect breed specific wool from a lot of the sheep farmers up in Vermont and turn it into yarn. She had on the sheep hat that we have, I think we only have three of those kits left, if you are interested, they are on our website. But this is what her yarn looks like. We also carry um, the yarn that she produces. This is the Scuttleship Romney fingering. And the Romney is the um, breed of sheep. And she not only collects from her farm, wool from her farm, but she's beginning to collect from other farms in the area and she keeps each farm um, by itself so that she do, you don't get a blending of the yarn uh, from different breeds of sheep. So the Scuttleship Down is Kate's own farm and then there is um, one called Coopworth. That's another breed of the sheep. Now, this is not a yarn for everybody. Hi, Nancy. It is a fingering weight, but it is not a super wash. So if you're used to that real soft, almost creamy feeling of the super washes, you will not necessarily like the feeling of um, her yarns because it is much more of a basic true wool. Um, it's great. It's gonna, um, uh, it's going to last for a really long time. It does not pill because of the way that it is spun and um, it wears like iron. So it makes a really great uh, things like fingerless mitts or hats and um, sweaters that you would wear over something. So if you're looking for a real true fiber, a return to what will used to be, then come on in and look because we've still got quite a few of her colors and her dyeing, her colors are deep and saturated. So I love the way that those look. Hey Nancy, nice to have you here with us too. 
So Saturday, and if you look at her Facebook page, Baba Link Yarn, you will find some of the other um, days that she's doing this live from the sheep farm as well. And it is a true sign of spring, especially for these sheep farmers. That's when they do the shearing, like she said, and that's when all those baby lambs are born. And so for them, it really means spring is coming when those sheep begin to drop those babies all over the place. And for me, I, when I was driving in this morning, I was thinking about, you know, we can tell that the light is different now. Um, the sun is a little bit brighter. It doesn't even necessarily be that have to be that warm to feel the warmth of the sun. And um, one of the things that I always see at springtime is I drive by a farm where they have chickens and when the chickens are outside starting to peck at the dirt and the little tiny grass things that are growing and all of the tiniest of bugs that might be out there that for me is always a sign of spring and we have chickens and in our yard it's more about how many eggs we start to get again once they have gone through their slowdown during the winter and the biggest sign of spring for me is when my husband Russ brings home the forced hyacinth bulbs that he um, absolutely loves and I love too. Every time in the spring when he goes grocery shopping, he will buy a little potted hyacinth plant and we bring it indoors, have it indoors, and when it blooms, it just fills the house with that beautiful aroma. And then um, by the time they're done blooming, it's time to plant them outside. So we have a wonderful little hyacinth garden outside. And the truth is that they don't bloom quite as proficiently after they've been forced when you move them outside, but they do still bloom. So it is definitely uh, one of my favorite springtime things is when Russ starts to bring home hyacinth for us to share. Yeah. That's you might be waiting for your seeds to grow. I know a lot of knitters are also gardeners and have probably started seeds already. So whether you've got them under a grow light or in your sunny window, you're sitting around waiting for those things to pop up out of the ground. And that's always an exciting thing too. So that means that you still have some time to um, do another li little knitting project. And I've been posting a lot about our spring fever box. We still have some of those left. It's not too late to order. We'll be taking orders through this week and you can order that on the website. And as a reminder, our spring fever box is a mystery box. You're going to get a skein of luxury yarn in there, hand dyed superwash. You are going to get a pattern that's appropriate for that yarn. You don't necessarily need to knit that pattern, but we'll be able to give you other recommendations too if you don't like it, but we like to give you some idea of what you can do with that one skein of yarn. You're going to get um, treats from two other local businesses this time. Last time, um, or in our Wooly Thoughts box, we did a partnership with Tangle Chocolate um, that is produced here in town and she does her little chocolate wafers which are just, she says, just the right amount of chocolate um, to really fill your mouth with that cocoa flavor and I won't have one now because I love it and I'll eat the whole box. Um, but Tangle Chocolate is one of the places that we did partner with the last time we did a box, but we're doing something different this time. So it will be a surprise to you who we partner with. But there's gonna be two others, um, not knitting related things, but treat related things. And then you're also gonna get a number of knitting related treats, things that you maybe even didn't realize you needed but that are almost essential for your knitting bag um, or toolkit. So take a look, take a dare, take a chance on our spring fever box. And um, I think you'll be pretty happy as we go through that. That box is $85 and 
we will have them ready for pickup or delivery on March 20th and you can ask to have us mail it to you or you can let us know that you're just going to come by and pick it up and then we'll have a big unboxing so that you get the chance to see what people have been finding in their boxes so we're looking forward to that that's going to be some fun some fun unboxing this spring um, and I guarantee that that the yarn that we put in there is going to be a feast for your eyes we all when spring comes I think we're all a little bit desperate for color we love to see as much color as possible whether it's pastels or really bright colors you're going to be very happy when you open that box and see the color feast that's in there this time. Um, the sweater that I have on, I wanted to show you too, because this is its virgin wearing. You can stand up. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up and get back so you can see it. It's a basic stocking net stitch, but it's another one of those lightweight mohairs with a strand held with a strand of fingering really weight awesome. yarn, which is one of my absolute favorite things to do. Now, this is um, the Cabrito along with a strand of fingering weight wool. Uh, you can do it with periwinkle sheep. You can do it with the Manos Fino, and it is a very basic pattern. Um, the Espace Tricot does one whose name I can't quite remember right now, but that's what I started it based on and then I just took off and went. It's top down, so there aren't any pieces that you have to sew together. It's all in one piece and it just makes the most comfortable, lightweight, but warm sweater. I just love them. Thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, I really like the color too. It is red and this would look great on you but I'm keeping it, <laughs> it's for me. Um, but there are a lot of things on Ravelry that are doing those, that idea, a lightweight mohair along with a strand of fingering weight yarn. Um, so you don't have a hard time uh, finding a pattern that you can use. And we've got several mohair choices from um, the Cabrito by Manos to uh, hand dyed from Periwinkle Sheep to the Madeline Tosh is also doing a hand dyed mohair as well and we've got some more coming in. Willa, I will put the pattern name in my notes at the end uh, because I can't think of what the pattern is called off the top of my head. But if you go on Ravelry and look for any of the Espace, E-S-P-A-C-E, Trico, T-R-I-C-O-T, all of their um, designs are fairly simple and this is one of the very basic ones. Um, so you will be able to find it and all of their patterns are free. So you can get those too. The other thing that I wanted to show you today was a little update talking about using the two strands together. Kate has been working on the um, scarf pattern that we did in one of the boxes, gift boxes, where we did a strand of mohair with a strand of wool. And no, there, Brenda, there is no pattern stitch. It's just stocking net stitch. If you're seeing something else, it might be the waviness of the, of the camera, but it's simple stocking net stitch from top to bottom. So this is Kate's, how far Kate has come with the, um, Yakima. what is it? It's Yakima. No, it's, it's the Yak. Yes, it is. It's the Yakima and the um, Cabrito that we've, that we put together, but I was wondering if you remembered what the pattern name was as Augustus well, but we showed that a couple times ago. Um, it's in the holiday box, yeah. This one, and she's gotten pretty far. This is the one, I talked about it before, that she's gonna turn into sleeves, so it's going to be a little bit of a sweater, um, or shawl kind of thing for her, yeah, so shrug. Okay, she's gonna find that and put the link up there. Um, doesn't take much yarn either because you, even though you're working with the two strands, you're on a big needle, Augusta scarf. Um, so it goes pretty quickly. Yep. Yes, that's it. Um, and that light just went off, Kate, too, on the thing. Um, thanks, Kathy. It is really pretty. Thanks, Bonnie. Yeah, she's doing a great job. I can't wait to see that done. But again, there's lots of different possibilities for the mohair and the, um, 
fingering weight yarn held together with it. It is still crochet month and I finished a little piece this weekend that I wanted to share with you too. This is called, let me see my notes. This is called Lean On Me and it's a fairly simple wedge. Again, you start at the bottom and crochet up until you run out of yarn. It's basically three rows of a half double crochet with a row of a double crochet chain one until you run out of yarn. And this crochet is much more reversible than um, knitting is. So it doesn't really matter what you do to it or how you wear it. But I did it out of one skein of the Evolution from Trent Trendsetter, which is a cake yarn and it is a gradient. So you get some subtle changes. This is not a bright um, color yarn. It's very, very subtle. And this one is this color, color number two. So you get a lot of that coppery brown color with a little hint of blue at the end. And that, Kate just put up the link to the sweater pattern that I have on. And then this is color eight, which is those pinks to beiges. So one skein of this yarn is plenty to do this particular crochet shawl. If you are a crocheter and care to celebrate crochet month with us, we've got that one done. And then that Saturday night that we had the pajama party, I finished the cowl pattern that we did with the three Irish girls yarn in that. Eileen finished hers too, but I don't think we have the picture to show you. Hi, Nancy. That's the, Kate has put the link up to this pattern. This also is a free pattern on Ravelry. And there's, um, this is one skein again, as well of the three Irish girls. And Kate did put this up on the website. So it is available there. It's one skein of the three Irish girls. We put the colors um, and basically we just labeled them as dark gray, dark teal, light pink, dark pink, um, so that we don't, because they don't have tags on them. They're a tag free it's, yarn. It's so we have a way of identifying them. So um, you can order those if you like. This is again a merino wool that is luscious to knit with and um, really feels nice and soft and squishy and boy you could wear this all day long. And look at how nice that falls right around your neck. This is the perfect kind of thing that you want to wear if you're a walker on these spring days. I mean it does this week of course we're supposed to get nice and warm up into the 60s but if you um, walk early in the morning it's just enough under a light coat so that your neck doesn't get cold and it makes it um, nice and cozy and easy to wear. Bonnie, yes I know when there's a whole lot of knitting to, done, to be done it's hard to go back to those projects that you start. I know because I think I've started three different things this weekend in anticipation of what's going to be coming up. We are getting, let's see, when is it coming? The, um, I've talked before about the Malabrigo knitting, knit along, the K-A-L, that's done with three skeins of their sock yarn. That pattern is available for free on Ravelry as well. It's for the Temperance Shawl. And we are a participating store in this um, knit along. So we, our second order of the sock yarn is coming on Wednesday. So Wednesday, I will be unpacking the other colors by the afternoon, if you are interested in joining that knit along, you'll be able to come in and pick your colors. And next Monday, I'm gonna be showing some three skein groupings, three color groupings. It's done with just three skeins. You only need one of each color that you choose and we hopefully will be able to entice you to join in on that. That was one of the things that I started this weekend. And like a lot of the wedge shawls, you start with a small number of stitches and grow. And so at, in just an hour's worth of knitting, you feel like you've done a whole lot. But then you start to hit the big numbers when you're really up there over a hundred stitches and the rows take a little bit longer. But it's an easy enough shawl. 
um, for even a beginner to do. So if you take a close look at that and want to come in and look at some colors, we can help you pick out some choices there. After Wednesday, you'll have the full array of what our order is um, to pick from. You can look at it online, but I can tell you right now there are not going to be, you can look at it on the Malabrigo site. Um, not all the colors that they have on their site are available. As soon as they get an order in, I'm ordering colors. And I think we have another 10 or 12 colors coming in with the 12 or 15 colors that we already got. Um, but not every color is is ready to ship. So we kind of have to deal with what we can get. And we're still seeing that. Yeah, I said Wednesday. Usually UPS comes, Nancy, um, sometime in the morning, like we already got our order, uh, an order in today. But we'll be able to open it and have it up on the shelf or available to you Wednesday afternoon. Um, so hopefully some of you will be able to get in then. We'll be open until about fourth quarter to five on Wednesday. So that's coming. Um, we are also expecting a, another order from Feederbrook Farms, which is one of my favorite yarns. And that's another thing that I started this weekend in anticipation of that order coming in. I've done a little crochet a cowl out of it and I've just written a pattern for a pretty unique um, knit cowl so I will be able to show both of you those to you when that order comes in I would show it to you beforehand but um, I think I'll wait until we actually have the yarn or all of the yarn colors in that we want so in the next couple of Mondays you'll be able to see that hopefully and we'll get that going so I titled this as International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day to all of you. And in thinking about International Women's Day, I was remembering three of the women um, in the knitting world that had the most influence on my knitting journey and in, on my knitting life. And one of the very first women was Elizabeth Zimmerman. She is probably a, a considered um, the queen of knitting inspiration. Back when I, in 1981, when I first started knitting, working um, at Northampton Wools for Jacqueline Severini, Elizabeth Zimmerman was just beginning to publish um, the several books that she has published and Knitting Without Tears was her first book. You can find Elizabeth Zimmerman books on Amazon. You can usually find them at in the library. Forbes has an excellent knitting library and you'll be able to find all of her titles there. But Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitting Without Tears sort of takes you along with her on a knitting journey. It's not a pattern book per se that you are used to now. It's really a knitting exploration and, and a description of how she went about discovering knitting and how she goes about um, constructing sweaters. She is a big proponent for knitting in the round. She is a big proponent of figuring out yourself. So when you do a Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern, you may get a set of instructions that are less precise than what we are used to now. Um, but she um, really um, encouraged me to strike out there on my own, to not be afraid, which is basically what her Knitting Without Tears is about. Do it and see what you get, and don't be afraid of it. Lots of wonderful tips and tricks, and I basically was able to read my way through every single one of her books as they became available, um, because I was able to spend my time in the store um, Jacqueline did a great job of always getting the most current books available in the store. And that was when um, maybe there were six to eight books published a year rather than the huge amount of books that we have published now. So Elizabeth Zimmerman was the first one. Yep, that baby surprise jacket, Bess, is one of the most popular baby sweaters. Um, that and the little lace one that it that is also knit from the top down. Um, oh, Brenda, thank you so much for that. 
Thank you, thank you. Um, well, I owe what I know to these three women. Elizabeth was the first. Then, shortly after that, was Barbara Walker. And Barbara Walker is responsible for the first collection of knitting patterns um, that were ever published. She published, I think, four or five knitting pattern books, and she spent years just collecting stitch patterns. You know, knitting was such an oral um, tradition that grandmothers and mothers and great-grandmothers -grand passed on their designs or their stitch patterns verbally rather than um, having them printed or online like we find them now. And so Barbara collected them all and has them in several treasuries. Um, they're called Treasury of Knitting Patterns, book one, two, three, and I think book four is a mosaic knitting pattern. I still use Barbara Walker books all the time. Yep, and yeah, Eileen, New York Times obituary. She was a big influencer in the knitting world. Um, she was the go-to for almost all of the, the um, designers that were out there because you could find out how to do almost any cable, any stitch pattern, it was in her book. So she was the inspiration to many, many knitters. She herself was not what I would call a big knitter. She wasn't a designer. She didn't come out with a ton of sweating pa sweater patterns. She did do some, um, but it was more the idea of knitting, the, the, the specific stitch patterns that were out there and the collection of, of this craft from a number of different women that inspired Barb. Barbara. And the last influence on my life was also a very big one. And that was Kat Bordy. And Kat just passed away um, this past year um, from a long battle with cancer. And I knew Kat personally. I took a lot of classes with her. We both worked for Frog Tree Yarns at the same time and were able to spend some time together, um, both at her retreats out in her beloved um, island off of the Seattle, the Washington State coast, and um, in when we would t attend the trade shows together, she had a mathematician's mind and looked at knitting in a completely unique way. Cat Morty is responsible for knitting socks on two circular needles, for the Mobius cast on, for um, several unique and different ways of looking at knit construction. She still has, a, there's still a very active website in her name that her daughter has taken over and is running. She has a number of books, again, that you would be able to purchase on Amazon and a very big following on Ravelry. There is a Cat Boardy group um, and you can um, take some time and explore all the different techniques that Cat has come up with and what she's got on in that picture that that link that Kate just put up is also one of her very unique books. Um, one of the fun things that she did too, besides the socks on two circular needles, what's lo was lots of different ways of uh, attacking a sock heel. So with a little bit of exploration, you'll be able to find um, several different explanations on how to make different kinds of heels. She influenced so many big designers in the knitting world um, that you almost can't approach one without finding something of cats in there. But those are the three most important women in my knitting life. And um, I hope that you'll be able to find some time to explore what they have to offer because they are still a part of the knitting community and probably never will stop being that as well. Um, so that is about it, I think, for today. Um, I hope that you take some time. Like I said, we are constantly working on the website and every week Kat is putting some new things, I mean, not Kat, Kate. <laughs> Kate is putting new things up on there. So don't forget to look for the Three Irish Girls yarn if you're interested and the surprise, the Spring Fever surprise box. We'd really like to get that going. And thanks, Eileen. I hope you guys enjoyed that, those little tips. 
and um, we look forward to seeing you again next Monday. In the meantime, have a great knitting week. Enjoy that really warm um, midweek that we're supposed to have. I know I'm going to open the windows tomorrow as soon as it hits 50 degrees and get our annual air out going. Um, so take care, everybody. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.